I would like to remind everyone to make sure you turn all your cell phones off uh, or on to the vibrating position, please. Also, please be advised our city council meetings are broadcast on TV channel 99 on Comcast. This meeting, the guests and city council will now come to order. The chair calls on city clerk Ivan Nelson for the roll call. Councilman Harris? Here. Williams? Here. Avery? Here. President Eccles is absent today and the meeting is being chaired by President Pro Tem Johnny Cannon. Councilman Stewart? Here. Cannon? Here. Councilman Reed is not here at the present time. Uh, he hopes to join us before adjournment. Uh, we do have a quorum present today and the meeting is open for business. I will ask Brian Harbison to come forward and lead the invocation. Please stand and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Almighty God, we just thank you for today. We thank you for keeping us safe through the storms. And God, as we prepare to remember those this Sunday who died on 9-11, God, we also remember the thousands of servicemen who have given their lives since then in this fight against terrorism. God, we just pray that you will continue to help our nation, keep our eyes on you. I pray that you will give wisdom to this council today in the decisions they have to make. We promise to give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Where are you go. Chair, we entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the Finance Committee meeting, work session, and council meeting on August the 30th. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to approve minutes. The Chair, we entertain a motion to ratify payments of the count for the week of August the 26th through September the 1st. So moved. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries to ratify payment of the accounts. That brings us down to number seven, proclamations, Mayor. I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Philip Grandman to come up, please, and anybody would want to bring with him. Uh, Judge Ogletree was going to be here, but I think he got tied up in court. So anyway, Mr. Grandman. Proclamation here, whereas research, sh <clears throat> research shows that substance use and mental disorders are treatable and people should seek assistance for these conditions in the same urgency as they would for any other health problem. Thus, it is essential for the 22.5 million people aged 12 or older who currently suffer from substance use disorder and the 45.1 million adults aged 18 or older living with a mental health problem to realize that recovery is possible to improve overall health and well-being. To build on that encouraging message, this year's National Recovery Month, Prevention Works, Treatment is Effective, People Recover, theme is Join the Voices for Recovery. Recovery benefits everyone. The <clears throat> national campaign spreads the message that behavioral health is an essential part of health and one's overall wellness and that prevention works. Treatment is effective and people can and do recover from substance use and mental disorders. All people have fundamental and inherent value to be accepted and treated with respect, <coughs> human dignity, and worth. Individuals should have access to fully participate in community life, including economic advancement and prosperity, fair and decent housing, quality education, positive opportunities to benefit from and to contribute to material, cultural, and social progress. Whereas in 2009, 4.3 million people aged 12 or older received treatment for substance use and disorder, and 30.2 million adults aged 18 or older received services for mental health problems, according to the 2009 National Survey on Drug Use and Health. 
All Americans have the opportunity to access provisions within the Affordable Care Act and Mental Health Parity and Addictions Equity Act aim to improve physical and emotional health while ensuring people will receive the care they need at a more reasonable cost. Whereas we and those across the United States need to recognize the achievements of those who have achieved long-term recovery and share with others how recovery positively benefits society as a whole. Whereas for 22 years, Recovery Month has worked to improve the lives of those suffering from substance use and mental disorders by raising awareness of the disease and educating communities about the treatment and recovery resources that are available. For the, national re for the above reasons, I am asking the citizens of Gazin to join me celebrating this September as National Recovery Month. Prevention works, treatment is effective, and people recover. Therefore, I, Sharon Guyton, Mayor of the City of Gazin, do hereby proclaim the month of September 2011 is National Recovery Month in Gaston and call upon our community to observe the month and com with compelling programs and events that support this year's theme. Join the Voices for Recovery. Recovery benefits everyone. Mr. Graham. We want to thank y'all so much because September the 10th, we are having a recovery rally in Gadsden. And it's going to be from 3 to 11 o'clock, I mean, 3 to 10 o'clock. I'm so sorry. I was going to have you on an hour later. But we really do appreciate y'all letting us have the venue. It's going to be at Gadsden Sports Complex, and it's going to be totally free. So everyone in the community to come out because everyone has a family member or someone themselves that suffered from substance abuse addiction or mental health problems. So it's very important to us. And today we have represented the Northeast Alabama Crisis Center. We have the bridge, we have Gadsden Treatment Center, and we have um, CD Mental Health Center almost left us out. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. Thank you very much for your support. <laughs> Ava almost left out the most important one. Huh? Ava has been all it would have been really bad if you left out your own group, wouldn't it? Hey. You might not have got a paycheck next one month. <laughs> that brings us down to number eight, unfinished business. We have none today. Number nine, this is time and place is advertised to conduct a public hearing, allowing anyone to speak in opposition to or in favor of a resolution ordering abatement of nuisance on property located at 2926 Shahan Avenue in District 6. The last known owner is... Luma M. Helton, is there anyone who liked, would like to speak in opposition to this resolution? Does anyone here wish to speak in favor? Mr. President, I'm Brian Harbison with the Building Department. This case involves some building remains, trash and debris on some property on Shahan. Uh, we started the case in March. I actually took the case to municipal court. Uh, we were unsuccessful in getting the property cleaned up. We need a resolution from the council today to abate this nuisance. <coughs> the chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Second. You said you took it to court and you didn't get a resolution? In other words, they didn't do it. I mean, they was fine and everything. Well, of course, the uh, municipal court uh, has has limited jurisdiction. Uh, they they cannot authorize the city to go on the property. I understand, property but, on the county. but they did find that there was a nuisance and stuff. Yes, right. There. Uh, oh, okay. Well, there was a citation sent and a court uh, hearing. Uh, the party failed to show. Right. So uh, we're we're seeking resolution to clean it up. Okay. Yeah, I know we had to do that. I was just wondering if something happened in the municipal court that they didn't find that it was nuisance. Okay. Are there any more discussion? <clears throat> Clerk, will you take the vote, please? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? <clears throat> Motion carries to adopt. Number 10, there's a resolution reappointing members to the Building Code Board of Adjustments and Appeals. This reappoints 80 Coff and Ricky Hunter for a term expiring July the 30th, 2014, and Ralphie Godfrey for a term expiring July the 30th, 2015. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. 
Is there any discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. The next one's a resolution appointing members to the Design Review Board. This appoints Kevin Ferguson to replace Tony Redrick, Terrence Lane to replace Tommy Pearson, and reappoints Roger Collins for a term expiring June 30, 2013. It appoints Kevin Sylvie, Wesley Williams, Howard Wren, and Ed Wadley for terms expiring June 30, 2014. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Well, we'd just like to say thank you for the people who are willing to serve on these non-paying boards. They're citizens that step up and take that responsibility, and we appreciate that uh, from our citizens who are willing to serve on these boards. Any more discussion? Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries to adopt. The next one's a resolution authorizing agreement with Jones, Blair, Waldrop, and Tucker. This is, this is for professional engineering services regarding development of such plans and specifications as may be required by the Alabama Department of Transportation for the safe routes to school project at Euro Brown Elementary School. The amount is $3,750. The chair will entertain a motion to adopt this resolution. So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Thank you. Mr. President, one, one thing that we do want to highlight here is that uh, while your Brown may be the school that's benefiting at this point, uh, there is work underway, and I think there were proposals submitted on behalf of the other schools. So, um, you know, so those who may be concerned about that, there are uh, efforts in place to make sure we address um, the uh, transportation routes at, and the pickup routes at all of our schools. Any more discussion? Yeah. <clears throat> I would just say, too, on that that, uh, you know, the Board of Education applied and they asked for our help in trying to do some of the work, and to, uh, but it is a grant, so we're going to work with any of them. And, and that's what I understand, too, David, there's applied for all of them. That's what I understand. Okay. Okay. Clerk, will you take the vote, please? Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known as saying aye. Aye. Uh, those opposed, motion carries to adopt. New business, is it? Any new business today? Mr. President, I do have uh, one item uh, of new business. Uh, this is uh, legal document 30, 337. It's a resolution creating and eliminating job classifications and amending <coughs> and amending uh, a couple of resolutions. I ask that we consider this today. Second. Clerk, will you take the vote? Those in favor to consider the resolution today, let it be known as saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Consent has been granted. Move to adopt. Second. Second. Are there any discussion? Yes, sir, Mr. President. Um, th this essentially is uh, uh, eliminating um, an existing um, position, uh, that is that of the chief programmer, and basically re replacing that with uh, a new title of network administrator. And then, of course, uh, we're going to be adding a, uh, a new position of assistant engineer. Uh, but uh, that that position will be funded by a current position uh, that of city uh, superintendent of uh, city services that won't be won't be funded in the upcoming budget year. So um, this is pretty much a net zero effect or a wash uh, from a budgetary standpoint. And uh, and again, the, uh, the the title change for the network network administrators is more appropriate in terms of their their actual job duties and, and uh, responsibilities. Uh I thought we discussed upstairs to add the city attorney position or chief. What did, what did we do? We, I thought we added two or three more positions to that. <laughs> we didn't. I'm sorry. Okay. My mistake. I think you, I think you probably, when you came in those 10 minutes late, you must have overslept and got what was going on today. <laughs> well, but that was just your wish for thinking. <laughs> I, I thought I heard that mention upstairs, and I, I took care of them. I, I, I took up for them. Okay. <laughs> Are there any more discussion? If there's not, clerk, would you please take the vote? <laughs> <laughs> Those in favor to adopt the resolution, let it be known by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, <clears throat> motion carries to adopt. Do we have any more new business today? That brings us down to department reports, committee boards, <laughs> etc. 
We have none today. We have citizens request. Mr. Alfred Williams, is he here today? Yes, he's here. He's going to talk about the gas and trolley system. Mr. Williams, if you'll give your name and address to the city clerk there, and you have five minutes, please, sir. Right. Appreciate you coming today. All right. All right. <laughs> My name is uh, Al Williams. Uh, my address is 932 4th Avenue, uh, Gaston, Alabama. First of all, I want to thank the city of Gaston for what they're doing in terms of the Gaston trolley system. Uh, I know that the federal government <coughs> provides most of, most of the funding, if I'm not correct, but that the city does do a you know, great job toward the financing of the Gaston public you know, trolley system. For the past two years, or since September of 2009, I have been util utilizing the gas and trolley system as my primary means of transportation. As a matter of fact, I have gotten to the point where I had to say that, you know, I'm, I'm content with going out, leaving this world, riding the gas and trolley <laughs> system. <laughs> uh, <laughs> some things have happened. And if I live, I'm going to be uh, starting a business, so I'm going to have to have a vehicle. So uh, that's the only reason I'm going to get a vehicle. <laughs> if it wasn't for that, I would be content to ride the gas and trolley system. So, Mayor, Council, I thank you all for what you're doing. You don't know how much you're helping people to you know, get around to different places that they need to go to. Uh, I extended an invitation at one point, I don't know if it got to the Oliver Councilman or not, but I extend an invitation to you to ride the pub gas and public trial system just to see how, you know, how many people you are helping. Uh, you know, people are infirmed, they're in wheelchairs, and they're in everything else, and they're riding the gas and public you know, trolley system. And the reason why I didn't want to get off the gas and trolley system was, you know, being, uh, soon we'll be 62 on, uh, this coming Saturday, I believe it is, the 10th of September, I'll be 62. But I'm already on Medicare and everything, so I'm able to ride the gas and trolley system for 25 cents. I can go in just about anywhere I want to go in this city for 25 cents. And on a round trip, it costs me 50 cents. That's why I don't, didn't want a car. <laughs> I mean, I can't go nowhere with no car for 50 cents. That's right. So oh, I thank you again, and I'm going to speak in behalf of the drivers. <coughs> I know a resolution have come before the council in time past, asking for extra, you know, some extra pay for the drivers. I'm coming to ask that you all seriously consider giving the drivers a extra dollar per hour in pay. I know it. I know the situation is tight and everything. But these drivers, for the most part, they do a great job. They have to put up with people that don't want to pay. They have to maintain a hectic schedule. The one that's going from Gaston, well, Gaston, they call it the Gaston State, they have to make a circle around about 20 something, or it may not be 20, but it might be about 14 or 15 stops. They have to make that trip in, in 30 minutes, two times an hour in the East Gaston area. And so they're under the gun, and they have to meet deadlines. So I'm asking the city to consider giving them an extra dollar an hour. I know a dollar an hour is, you know, high, but I ask you to consider doing the very best that you can to give these drivers, you know, <laughs> most of them are retired. You know, I don't know what their situation is, whether they're not bringing in enough money and they have to go out and drive for the trolley or what the situation is. <clears throat> but they're out there driving. People, I mean, men and women in their 70s are driving, you know, the gas and trolley system. So if you can, please give them a raise of a dollar. If you can't do that, do the best that you can. And I thank you in concluding that you all are providing that service. You, are, you don't have to do it. So I thank you for providing that service. And it looked like my days on. <laughs> what it was. Oh, it looked like my days on the gas trolley system home. <laughs> that brings us to remarks by the mayor and council. 
<coughs> Councilman Reed, would you like to go first, please? <laughs> I just got here. Did I miss anything? No. Well, I mean, you know. Oh, we um, decided to do away with District 7 <laughs> while you were gone. We voted. Well, through. that takes a, a, a majority vote at Jack's on the mountain every morning. <laughs> <laughs> you'll, have, you'll have to drop by and check on that. <laughs> Hey, uh, no, the only thing I got this week, I got to commend uh, the people at Sherman uh, that clean up Broad Street. I leave out from up there every morning coming this way. They, that's the cleanest thing I've ever seen. I mean, they work at it. And even after first Friday, I saw two little old pieces of napkin on the whole Broad Street. Anyway, I thought that was great, and they should be commended for that. That's all I got. Y'all covered the bees, didn't you? Yes, Absolutely. we did. Sir. Somebody's talking about the bees. Okay, that's all I got. Councilman Stewart, I'd just like to uh, thank the people who uh, work in mental health and substance abuse. Uh, these are all my friends back there, and uh, I serve on a couple of those boards. So, uh, just great to see them here. They do it. They do a wonderful job, and I hope everybody gets out to the substance abuse uh, uh, fair that we're going to have. Um, other than that. Uh, I'm gonna go home and build a fire. I'm about to freeze today. <laughs> I have. I don't have anything else. Councilman Stewart, every other month or so, when I come by Talon at, at night, I see your truck or car over there. I just yes. let everybody know you're always over there a couple times a month. Anyway, right. how's it going on at you? CED Mental Health in, in Talon. They they have about uh, 80 employees. <coughs> they serve uh, Etowah. Uh, Cherokee in DeKalb County and do a wonderful job. So it's a good organization. Councilman Avery? I'm, I'm, I'm glad he cleared that up about them being his friend. Because <laughs> 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 I think the folks down this end got the impression that you were, anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, that, that would probably be clever. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I want to say I know we've had uh, a lot of bad weather and I hope people can bear with us. Uh, I understand we had a lot of trees down this morning and, 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 and everything. I know we had a lot of rain. I, I was gone most well. I was gone all the weekend over the holidays. Uh, I'm still trying to dry out, too. I went to a football game this weekend up in Iowa, and uh, I'm still wet. Uh, I don't think I'm going to dry out anytime soon, so hopefully the city will dry out pretty soon. But anyway, just, just bear with us, and I understand that they are working to get all the trees up, and, and I think Alabama Power, we still have power out. In some areas too, mm -hmm. I think too. Yeah. So hopefully we'll be able to get that that, that taken care of. Um, my uh, district meeting, I think, is scheduled for next week. Uh, but I'll I'll make that. No, I won't be here next Tuesday. So did we schedule it for that Thursday? <coughs> we did not schedule it for that Thursday. We need to schedule it for that Thursday, I think, because I, I I won't. I think it's next week. I won't be here. I'm still turned around from the weekend. It's been a long, long weekend uh, going up there to the ball game. But anyway, that's all I have, and we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that later. That's it. Councilman Williams. Thank you, uh, Councilman Cannon. So just a couple of things. <coughs> I do want to make sure that we keep uh, in uh, remembrance the anniversary of uh, the events on 9-11. I think there are a couple of local events that I'm aware of anyway, one at Goodyear. Um, recognizing our rescue uh, personnel uh, and um, first responders. Um, and I think that's on, is that on Sunday as well? Sunday, 2 to 4, I believe. Yeah, it's at Sunday. It's from 2 to 4 at, uh, at the, at the good, in the Goodyear parking lot. And then, of course, there's an event at uh, Convention Hall uh, that's going to be held uh, on that same day. And I think the mayor is going to be speaking there along with some other folks. So, again, where you can, please support these events. You know, I don't... I don't have to go on and on about how <coughs> horrific uh, that memory is, and but we can't forget that, and we can't forget uh, what it means and some of the changes that have come from it, and what it means to uh, uh, for us to protect our way <coughs> our way of life. Uh, there are people out there who don't sleep um, uh, without uh, thinking of uh, ways to eliminate our way of life. So, again, this just helps to keep us in remembrance of just how <coughs> precious what we have here in this country is. Um, <coughs> And, and of course, it helps us to remember the over three, the over uh, almost 3,000 people that uh, lost their lives on that day due to a very cruel act. So, um, again, I, I do want to comment on mental mental health. I've I've had some some diagnoses that have hit me very personal uh, here recently and within my family. And uh, 
and and and, and I, you know, many times we think of mental health as being some some grand, uh, very obvious thing that uh, that hits a family member and and, and impacts the psyche. But in many respects, it can be something very subtle. Um, and, uh, and and very you know and, and could, could be limited to just some social issue uh, relative to mental health. So please be very sensitive. I grew up in an area in, in an era where um, communities weren't very sensitive to um, to mental health issues. Uh, and I and I'm and I'm glad to see us from a community standpoint t start to turn the corner and be more sensitive towards those things. So again, let's let's continue to do that and continue to be sensitive to family members who, who have issues. Um, I likewise have had to turn the corner as it relates to some of those things. And the last thing I did want to speak to was the, um, the, the 2011 youth explosion. I do want to thank the Gaston Times for uh, the story that was in today's paper. And uh, again, that event is planned for 5 p.m. at uh, the Gaston City High School Auditorium for uh, September 17th. Um, with uh, those young people attending will also have the opportunity to uh, attend an after party afterwards. So um, as I've said before, this is an exciting time, an exciting <laughs> event. We're, we're starting to hear a lot of buzz about the event, uh, but this event in and of itself is not designed to fix anything. This event is uh, designed to help serve as a catalyst for some of the great organizations that are already in place that are doing some great and wonderful <laughs> things. So. Uh, we're excited about this event, and uh, we're excited about some of the panelists that we're going to have in the city. So please support that where you can. Thank you. Councilman Harris. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, like everyone else, I encourage everyone <coughs> to <coughs> remember the victims of 9-11 uh, during the week. Uh, and we're really and truly, uh, that is an event that we should never forget, and we should always remember those people, not just on the anniversary of that horrific uh, event. Uh, please remember all the victims and, and those persons who still suffer uh, from those things that happened on that day. And the, the cleanup that's going on today after the weekend uh, events, uh, I, I promise you and we've been assured by our city that these, these, this cleanup is go ongoing and is, and in my opinion, is being very well handled. Although, you know, there was a lot of destruction, a lot of trees. I think somewhere we heard this morning that 45 trees have fallen during the city, uh, over the city during this weekend. So uh, the city uh, is working diligently to get those uh, situations uh, rectified. Again, CED Mental Health and all the people who work in substance abuse, you ought to be commended. Because I think that I don't think there's a family anywhere that has not been touched in some manner by <coughs> mental health or substance abuse. So we congratulate you on the job that you're doing, and that we hope that everyone will continue to support you in all your endeavors. Of course, you have two two big uh, patriots here on city council. Uh, I won't call their name, but they're raising their eyebrows. They know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, I, I would like to mention something since we're on the subject of mental health. And there is a national organization called Omni that's going to have a uh, classes for people who have uh, somebody that's mentally re challenged in their families, for the families, and how to deal with this. It's going to be held at the First, uh, uh, First Methodist Church starting sometime this month. So if you like, if you have a, a, a member of your family that is mentally challenged and you'd like to take this course, get in touch with me and I'll put you in touch with the proper people and let you know when those classes are going to start. But it's a national <coughs> organization. They're trying to establish a chapter here in Etowah. They have one in Cherokee already. It's very active. So uh, get in touch with me and I'll put you in touch with the proper people if you're interested. Councilman Reed. Yeah, I just wanted to add, uh, if you have a tree in your yard that's out in the road or it's across your driveway, <clears throat> they're having a terrible time getting all this done, as we've talked about up here. But you got to realize that in most cases like that, we have power lines involved in that. So the power company has got to come out and do their thing. We don't want anybody getting hurt. So just kind of hold back. Let, let the power company do their job, and our public works department will come by and do theirs. That's all. Just a reminder. 
Robert, you want to go? But you got to yeah, I, I did look at my calendar, and it is next Thursday. That's the third Thursday. Um, as you know, this is football season. We don't do it on Saturday <laughs> during football season. So my district meeting will be next Thursday at 5 p.m. at the Carver Community Center. Uh, so please, ma'am, and please, sir, be mindful of that. I won't be here next Tuesday. That's why I'm making the announcement today. Okay. Mayor, we finally got to you. <laughs> all right. Uh, first of all, I want to thank Mr. Williams for coming in your uh, kind comments. We don't get a lot of kind <laughs> comments over here, but uh, I, I appreciate you doing that. And I, I will tell you, and I don't remember if it was, it was probably the year before last, when I got in office, I think the pay scale was anywhere from 725 to 825. Everybody made different amounts. And we did put them all together and raise them all to nine dollars. I think year before last on that, but but I still I know what you're talking about. They do a great job and they put up with a lot of uh, gab, I guess. <laughs> and also, uh, Mr. Williams, I don't know if he remembers, but uh, I was coaching at General Forrest about 1969 when he played football at Emma Sansom, and he was one more good end. I'm telling you, he, <laughs> he was a player. Uh, but uh, thank you for coming today. Also, uh, let's see. I want to introduce uh, Captain Harbin. He's the new yeah. chief of police right here. I'd like to give him a big hand. Oh. Captain, appreciate you being here. <laughs> Seemed like I had something else, but I can't remember what it was. I guess that's all. Thank you. Okay. You I do. Like I do want to remind everybody today. I did have a. We did have a public works committee meeting. We was told there was 45 trees down at that time. I know there's more down since then. Out of those 45, 23 still had power lines in them. And please, please, please be careful if you get out in your yard around some power lines and those trees. Uh, and I do want to th say that they went out, our, our public works employees went out yesterday about 4 o'clock, and most of them stayed out all night and cutting the trees, trying to make you safe, trying to get back and forward to work. I know we've lost a lot of power, power outbound power companies trying to get all the power back on as, quiet, as fast as quick as I can. And I do want to thank the uh, Highland Volunteer Fire Department, but a couple of times last night I heard they was up on the mountain cutting some little trees and some limbs trying to help us, Mayor, and I do appreciate that. Okay, Mayor. Well, one more thing. Uh, Nakalula Falls, the park has several trees down, and it'll probably be maybe Friday, okay. maybe Thursday before they get open back up, so they're busy working up there. But. Uh, it, it, it'll either be Thursday or Friday, so if you plan something, you might want to call before you go up there. Make sure it is open. Thanks. Councilman Harris. Yes. Uh, I, I, I want to remind everybody again about the Sickle Cell Walkathon that's going to be held here starting the Moraine Park 9 o'clock on October the 8th. 9 to 12, Sickle Cell Walkathon. There's going to be a lot of people. There will be a lot of people involved in this walkathon. We will have people from surrounding counties coming in to help us as we, the citizens of Gadsden, have gone into other counties to help them when they were having their walkathon. So I encourage all the citizens of Gadsden, all the citizens of Gadsden, to please support this program. Uh, and wh wherever you can, uh, you can see me if you need more information on it. I'd be glad to give you additional information on this event. Thank you. I do want to October remind, 8th, Saturday, October 8th. Excuse me. I do want to remind everybody that Tuesday's garbage will be picked up tomorrow during the holiday. We had the Monday. Monday's garbage will be picked up today. Tuesday's will be picked up tomorrow and we'll be back on regular schedule this week. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. We're adjourned. <laughs>